Yes, I, I'm basically I'm a writer, uh, playwright, but uh, also uh, writing for film and television. Uh, sometimes directing. But uh, the main thing why I'm here is uh, that uh, 25 years ago I started a program on uh, writing for stage and for screen in Latvia, a professional program. Uh, I must, in three words, uh, tell you how we are working in Latvia, and afterwards I will put some else ideas to this. Uh, we started uh, as a bachelor program, and uh, in fact, uh, this bachelor program was uh, in Academy of Culture uh, for uh, more than 20 years, and now it's not. I'm not too loud, yeah, or no, it's okay. <laughs> and uh, mm, uh, and now I I, I mm, now uh, we are started masters program. Uh, what I I like very much because uh, you know it's uh, it's much easier to talk with people who had graduated already something. And we are now in Liepāja University. We have a master's program on, uh, on writing for stage and screen. It's two years program, as all master's programs are. Uh, this is a, a question of these professional playwrights. Uh, let's say, when I'm saying playwrights, it means also screenwriters and, and uh, etc. Uh, in fact, uh, um, I need to say that uh, uh, why I'm talking about uh, this uh, professional program, because uh, all except one, our playwright is from this bachelor program in Latvia. All our young playwrights are uh, graduated my program. <laughs> okay, yes, uh, and 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 um, and only one guy is from actors. But he had also, uh, he was on my lectures in academy because actors are together studying. Okay, but uh, uh, why I'm saying this? Not because of myself, but because of, uh, uh, of this. That this is a improvement that um, there, there are some uh, professional skills. You need some professional skills, some professional basis to work professionally also in, in theaters and uh, to collaborate with directors. All our young playwrights, in fact, they are working in very different ways. Absolutely, they are, they, they are crazy different people. Uh, why? Uh, because they are. And uh, uh, our uh, program is not, uh, a, let's say, it's not a creative program. What it means, it's not a program where I'm trying uh, um, uh, to get something create, uh, creative out from my students. No, it's not my business at all. It's their own business. Th this is their own uh, kitchen. Uh, they must be creative if you want to uh, do this job. But uh, our program is only mm, uh, focused on, on giving these professional skills, how you can say out your very bright ideas or very huge, I don't know, themes or, or something else. And uh, that's why all these, our young playwrights, and they are working really a lot, they are very, very different. And I'm very happy about that. But this basis of all of them, uh, this is the same. I will tell afterwards about the basis, some three words. Um, what else, uh, how we're working uh, with this education on, on writing? Uh, we have also, um, such a non-governmental organization, Darbnitsas, it's in translation, it's workshops. And uh, we have um, main activities to, um, in workshops, these are uh, two uh, times per, ye uh, per year, we have two month intensive uh, writing courses. And uh, it's very strange, we, s we started some seven years ago these courses because there were very many people who said, oh, I don't need this uh, bachelor uh, program, but I, I, need, I need something to get to know about playwriting. 
and we established these curses, and we are really surprised that these curses still, every half a year, there are 15 to 20 people coming and, uh, and um, trying to, got, to get to know what playwriting is. Uh, they are very different. There are people who are only who want to be qualified theater goers, for example. Uh, they are, uh, um, let's say, maybe some 20 percent, 30 percent only are people who really want to write. But in curses, in fact, uh, this percentage is going up. At the end of curses, there are already some 75 percent of people who, who want to write. And they are writing, but mostly, mostly these people are writing for amateur theaters. In fact, um, uh, you know, it's the same as in Estonia, I suppose. It's rather hard to get in professional theaters. It's rather hard to get in, get in contact with directors, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, this amateur theater thing is, uh, is great, in fact. I'm also going around uh, Latvia and lecturing to amateur theater directors. And this is one of my <laughs> most beloved experience, I must say. Why? Because these people are technically skilled, in fact. They want to do something very much. But they have no this, they are technically skilled in this, in this real area, working with their own actors, but they have no idea how to do writing. But uh, in Latvia, our main classical uh, playwright, who is really great, and his, his plays are really still, they are, uh, we are staging these plays and these plays are really good. He, 100 years ago, he was writing only for amateur theaters. And that's why I'm going to these places, small places, and saying, you can. Don't try to find some, I don't know, American or, or French play and then put on the stage. No, you can write what's going on around you and tell us your story. And uh, they are saying, no, of course, when I'm coming, no, you are an idiot. <laughs> we do not know. You know better in Riga how to write. Then I'm asking them, look at me. I'm the right person who knows how you are living here. No, this is an answer. I'm not the right person. I don't know how they are living, but they know. And I'm trying to give them this, uh, per, these skills, these, um, these tools, how to put on the stage their own stories. I'm stressing out the stage, not writing some novels or, 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 or um, uh, stories, but, but putting on stage. It's very easy, <laughs> in fact. No, okay. Um, no, it, it works. In fact, it works, and, and people are, are building up their own plays, and uh, they are uh, rather slow, of course, but they are becoming uh, really interesting materials, really. Uh, I had such a such experience, fantastic. Some, for example, one, one lady who's, who said, no, I, I will not more. I had worked all my life. I have, I'm 77 and uh, I'm, I'm finishing with this. After my lectures, he, she wrote a play and it's one of the best performances of the year in amateur theaters were because he got, uh, she got uh, these, uh, these tools, how to do that. Uh, besides our, these workshops, what we are doing to somehow to motivate people uh, to write, uh, for some seven years we uh, did uh, such a 10 minutes of fame, uh, such a, every month uh, people, audience is coming to hear some three people are coming and telling in 10 minutes, I have an idea of the play. And I'm telling you now the idea of the play. And then uh, people in audience, I was surprised. 150 on every, this, every month, 150 people were coming to hear only ideas of the plays. And, uh, and they were voting for the best idea. But this best idea got some 100 euros, but 
they needed to write a play till the end of the season. <laughs> and at the end of the season, we had some seven new plays written on these best ideas, and they had a final, and then the best play came out. Um, of course, not of all these plays are good, but they had the possibility to uh, get some consultations from me and from my uh, former students. Also, these courses we are, uh, we, are, um, we are making together with my former students. I'm not alone. It's, it's uh, uh, why? Mostly because uh, to prove to people that uh, mm, there are very, I'm not a guru who is saying something and you must listen to this and then you must write as I, I'm, I had said. No, we are very, uh, we are two or three uh, people and we are quite different. And this, exactly this uh, fact uh, proves to people that, oh, everybody can, everybody can. Yes, everybody can. Uh, what is, um, what is the, uh, <laughs> there is the title of, of my lecture, yes? Can you translate? No, there is title how about I the father. father. Yeah, how I met my father, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Why I had uh, titled this uh, lecture, How I Met My Father. Uh, we have one of the brightest uh, young playwrights, Janis Balwadis in Latvia. He, um, uh, he was in this bachelor program studying and um, one day he came to uh, auditorium very nervous. I said, what's going on? I understood everything. What? I understood my father. Okay? <laughs> okay. From this point, he started to write very well. <laughs> Why? I will tell you. Uh, some um, more than 10 years ago, of course, it's, it's a very naive idea to write down a play today about playwriting. It's absolutely naive. But I wrote <laughs> such a book. Why? Uh, it was very, very important, in fact, for me. Um, mm, because the uh, first 10 years, of course, I, I was already a professor and telling very smart things. And I, I understood that mm, I do not understand something sometimes. Of course, I can speak a lot and then clear, clear. Okay, but I, I felt that I don't understand some, some points, in fact, in playwriting, in these tools of playwriting. And then I sat down and wrote on the paper what do I, I do not understand and what I need to understand. And in fact, I, I was not able to uh, find it in, you know, there are a lot, a lot of books on playwriting, especially on screenwriting. And, uh, it's almost impossible. It's on maybe in two books, some chapters are, and very, very short chapters about the main thing. Of course, uh, this lecture must be three hours, but I'll try to <laughs> compress it <laughs> very short. Uh, about the main thing, it's about characters. And uh, there is, you can Google, and you will uh, find out that there is only few words you will find in Google about how to build up a character. But there is a lot of text about, let's take a character and put in the conflict and blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's take a character. But what character is? And there is no answer about what character is. This is a book about what character is. But not what character is, but this is an active thing. How to build up a character. How, what are these obligatory things for character? Uh, what means character? It means that this is, in fact, you know, there are some uh, Christian societies who are not going to the theater and not making theater and film, you know? Yes? Probably you know. They are saying, no, I cannot do this. Why? Because they are saying, I, I, it's forbidden for me to put myself into place of God. And I agree, because when we're working on, in, on uh, theater and film, then in fact what we are doing, we are gods. We are creating creatures which are not existing in the real world, N never. It's uh, we are 
uh, we are creators. And what this means, of course, it's a very good feeling. Ooh, I'm God. But at the same time, you must understand that you must create a person who will afterwards go into the conflicts, etc., cetera, et cetera, who is understandable for your audience, uh, with whom you can identify freely. And this is a big problem. This is a very, very small thing. And the thing that uh, um, in everyday life people are saying, oh, yes, it's easy to make up character. No, it is not, in fact. Absolutely not. Uh, in, uh, in our program, people are, um, uh, we need some two years. To, uh, after the second year, uh, students are able to create freely a character, in fact. Sorry, it takes a rather long time. But when they uh, are getting this, this tool of creating the character, it is very easy to work further. It is, it's really, it's, it's an economy of time, <laughs> not a waste of time. And um, here, um, uh, what is, what is, so the, uh, I have more time, yeah? <laughs> I, I'm in some nervous because there are <laughs> so <laughs> few time. Okay, I will tell you in very, very few words what, uh, uh, what are, uh, there are, when I set up this uh, blank paper, uh, at the blank page, I understood that there is only four points we need to know to create a creature which is understandable for everybody on this earth. Why these four points? These are four points which we, everybody, have. Here also, you, everybody, you have these four points. And it's obligatory for every creature on this planet. And if you are, uh, you, if you are putting these four points into your character, then at once people are saying, yes, I know him. And they are starting to follow your play or film. Um, what are these points? They are very simple. They are very simple. It's crazy simple. Sorry for that. <laughs> Maybe you, you wanted to hear something very smart. No, absolutely not, nothing smart. Uh, first, uh, it is our age. There is no people on this earth without an age, you know. There is absolutely no. And if somebody, uh, young playwrights are, are um, writing their first play and writing, uh, for example, John, 40 to 50 years old. Sorry, you know such a person? 40 <laughs> to 50. There is no such a person on this earth. And again, can you, can you compare? It's a story about seven-year-old guy, and it's a story about 12-year-old guy. You see how different these stories are. 12 and 17, again, it's <laughs> quite different. 17 and 22, 22 and 29, you see? There are, there are quite different stories. There are quite different stories. What this mean? That we need to know this very, very simple thing. How old is your character? And uh, then why? Because when theater and film, in fact, they're visual arts. They are not textual arts. It's not literature. It's another theme. I hate literature. Now I'm a writer myself. But I hate literature when I'm a playwright. Uh, it's not about text. It's not about dialogues. It's a visual thing. And when uh, some uh, character is coming on the stage, then you see, oh, at once you know a lot of information about him. Because only because of his age, because you know that this character is living in this in this in this circle of uh, problems of this age, or maybe some character is pretending to be younger. Then also we will see this in comparison. For example, it's very interesting to ask you: How old is Hamlet? Do you know? Some ideas. What do you feel? Of course, uh, I'm not. Uh, 20. 20. 20s. More ideas? No? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's written in the play, in fact. Uh, <laughs> it is, he's 32. 
And um, uh, oh, Yorick, uh, I remember 30 years ago. It's 30 plus, if he remembers, yes. But um, uh, what I wanted to say, uh, that at that time in Shakespeare's time, people were living till 50, 60, max. And it means that Shakespeare wanted to show us a guy who is 50 years old, in fact. But he is. His actions are, as, as you said, in 20s. He's maximalist, who is, who, is, uh, uh, who is living his life as a teenager, in fact. And this, uh, this, uh, this, um, this contrast is very important, for example, for Shakespeare in this play, that he is gray-headed guy, but living as a teenager. And this is the main thing what is crazy interesting on the stage. Okay, uh, I can talk a little more and more about that. Um, uh, second, uh, second uh, point is, again, something what we, everybody of us have. It's our roots. Who is my mom? Who is my dad? Again, there is no person in the world without roots. Of course, this is not the first visible thing, what we, oh yeah, he has such roots and, and she has such roots. Of course not. But uh, roots are very important for our ideals, what our ideals will be, uh, in what family we, had, uh, we are uh, born and, and um, what we are thinking about the world. And um, mm, um, the best example about this maybe is uh, let's, uh, let's imagine some character from orphanage. I think you freely can understand what dreams this character have. Of course, to get a family. These are his roots. His mother, his father is uh, this orphanage. And uh, this is... Uh, mm, extremely important, and this is also why Yanis Balwadis came to the school and said, oh, I understood my father. At that point, he became a professional, in fact. He was not more uh, very, he was not writing, yes, he, he is still writing very personal things, but he was not personal as a professional, and this is very important. When you are writing pro, uh, personal things, but your tools are not personal, but they are professional, what did this means? This means that these tools are understandable for everybody. And then your personal story is understandable for everybody. He understood his father. From that point, he became professional. And from this day, he had no quarrels with his father because he understood. Hmm, okay. My father's roots are, okay, I understand, okay. And, and, and they are living now happily for a long <laughs> time already. And um, uh, yes, again, we have no, there is no person without it. And you can use it very, very good. Afterwards, we'll talk a little bit more about when we'll talk about fourth point of this uh, small, um, how to how it's called in English, I don't know. List, list, yes. Third, third point is how we are earning our money. Again, something very simple. What it means? It means that uh, very often we are, when we are starting to write our uh, plays and scripts and texts for the stage, also not only for the stage, but also some novels, then we, uh, we are forgetting that we are physical uh, creatures. And we have a lot of physiological needs. And we are thinking 100 times per day about this physical and physiological needs. And what this means, that we must satisfy somehow. Oh, it's rather cold in Tallinn now. I need something to put up. Again, you are thinking, what I will, what I will get? Uh, what coat I, I, I can get? I have an old coat. Mm, I, I can't go to, to this workshop with old coat. I need a new one, and so on, and so on. And uh, to satisfy yourself, in fact, you need to earn some money for that. And uh, this is, of course, thing what everybody have this point, that we need to get something for our physical and physiological needs. Of course, we can uh, uh, vary. We can, 
we can um, we can earn less or, or 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 more. It's another question. But we need something. We cannot say, oh, now I will be a poet. I will go to the desert and I will only write poetry. I need not money. Why you are smiling? Yes, of course you are smiling because you are normal creatures and you understand that it's impossible. He said, no, 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 it's possible. I need seven bananas per week, not more. Again, you are smiling. Of course, because you know that who will buy your bananas? Who will take your bananas to dessert? Who will pay for that? And again and again. Of course, uh, this is extremely uh, important, but very often we, uh, we are forgetting about that. And our, our, our creatures, not characters, but creatures are, oh, they are talking only about souls or about some ideas or, or something. And we are looking at it, mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. What you are eating, I don't care. And at that moment, uh, at that moment, you do not trust more to what's going on on the stage or the screen. It's the first thing, in fact. Uh, take a look when you are sitting and film uh, some. Uh, theater and take a look. These are the first things, these physical and physiological needs, when people are, um, uh, uh, where, when there are mistakes in this point. And this is the first thing you are noticing. Absolutely the first thing. And you do not trust. This is the main thing. If you do not trust, then you, you are not able to identify. And your story, sorry, is very bad. bad. Okay. And the fourth thing is, uh, you will say, ooh, when I will say this word, it's a dream. <laughs> ooh, why are they saying ooh? Yes, of course, it's very strange because all the first uh, three things are very rational. And the dream is, you can ask me, but the dream is so irrational thing. How, how we can talk about that? But uh, from the point of view of playwright, we can talk about that. Absolutely, we can talk about that. And um, uh, the dream, in fact, uh, is something uh, almost impossible for the person to reach something what, what is almost impossible. And the key word in this formula is almost impossible. If I would say that I want to be an astronaut. It's impossible, sorry, my age and et cetera, et cetera, when I, where I'm living and <laughs> so on. And uh, also how much money I have. <laughs> and and uh, of course, it's impossible. It's dreaming. It's not a dream. It's not a real dream. I want a, a white Mercedes. It's not a dream. It's a wish. I can manage somehow. Uh, maybe after a year, maybe after two years, but I can manage this. It's a wish. But the dream is some, something what is almost impossible, and it is really huge. And everybody of us, we have these dreams. But I'm sure you had never said this dream loudly. Maybe most of us had never said this dream to your closest people, in fact. We are a, bit, li a little bit ashamed of how big this dream is. For example, I can say, oh, I want to be the best playwright in the world. Oh, I, 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 I do not uh, like you to hear this, <laughs> of course, yes. And uh, of course, uh, mm, a lot of people, they most, in fact, on this planet, they are even not able to say to themselves this dream. But you are gods of your character, and you must say the dream of the character. This is the most important point. Why? Because every, every uh, dramatical story, it means uh, every uh, story which is for stage and for screen, starts at that moment when your character is making a step towards this dream. Every good text for stage and screen. I assure you. Why? Uh, not bad texts, once more. Good texts. <laughs> um, it always is starting with such words. And then one day, if I will say to you, 
And then one day there was a, the same day as previous. So, <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, to, why? <laughs> You're saying this, it's not interesting. I'm interested, and then one day, yes, 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 what, then one day? And then I'm telling the story. Why we need this? Uh, one of very practical things is that we have no time. Novelists have time enough. He can write. In literature, there is no time. But on stage and on screen, we have only two hours. Sorry, tell us the story in two hours. And this means that we are telling only the main thing, the m extremely, this extreme thing of, the, of your character. And this will be only connected how people are stepping to start to, um, to get closer to his or her dream, if you will know the dream. For example, one rather good example. Do you know what uh, dream Michael Jackson had? Ideas. You have some information. Once more. But it's impossible. It's dreaming. Yeah, it's dreaming. More, more. To become white. Yes, to become white. Of course. What he uh, what he was doing all his life. Try to remember. Absolutely. Of course. Everybody here in the hall, we can say, oh, why he needed to do that? He was so sympathetic when he was not white. <laughs> yes, but this is not your business. In fact, this is his dream. And he needed this, he personally. And this is a story about him. And again, we can go back to his childhood and we can understand, to his root, we can understand what, from where this dream came out. You know, all what, what was going in his childhood in America at that time. Uh, this is a very good example to understand how big dreams are. They are, for other people, they can be very, very absurd. But it's, we don't care. We are interested in the dream of this, especially this uh, man or woman. This is in very fast, yes, I must <laughs> um, <laughs> These are main points uh, where we are standing on. And from that point uh, in, in our uh, education, in our writing education, and from that point when we know our character, leading character, if there are more characters, it's a little bit not a question, but, uh, but very similar. Uh, when we have this character and we have this dream, we have perfect place where to start the place. We have no problems where to start, uh, to uh, the text where to start. And that's it, in fact. But for you, there's a good news. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this book is in Latvian, but this is the second edition. Uh, it's very interesting that uh, uh, in 2009, uh, we published the first edition of the book, and uh, after seven years uh, from shops, they came and they said, uh, have you more? I said, no. And I was surprised myself because thousand books about playwriting in Latvia, sorry, it says in Estonia, it's impossible, in fact, but there was no books more. And then I, um, I recognized um, a lot of people who are interested in psychology, they were buying this book because this is very s uh, close. And um, then uh, we published the second edition. And the second edition is that the first part of the book is more to everybody. Everybody. There is no, not, uh, not uh, it's a very readable book. It's, pff, it's not a uh, school book, what you hate. <laughs> but it's a readable book. And, and um, it's for everybody. It's, there is not, there is no, uh, a question about genres. This is a question about how we percept something on the stage or on the screen. This is the main topic of the book. And now it's for everybody. And at the end, there is a workshop. And in workshop, there's for freaks who, are, who wanted to be professionals, <laughs> yes. But the good news is that this book is translated in English. And uh, 
and Michal asked me to take from publisher I took with me, and you can buy for very small publisher's price the book I have with me. Um, ask something. I have uh, one question. Um, uh, what is the difference between dramatic theater, uh, dramatic playwriting, and post-dramatic playwriting? And is uh, post-dramatic playwriting somehow um, in your program? How is it represented mm -hmm. in your yeah. program? Uh, no, I'm not a theater scientist, and I'm not interested in this. Okay, I can tell. <laughs> but uh, no, of course, what we understand about this post-dramatic writing. I'm not deep in this, and really I'm not interested in this, but I made even the first post-dramatic performance in Latvia, but I'm not interested in problematic of <laughs> this. But the thing is that uh, what I said, that my, my uh, former students, they are working in very different styles. Also this post-dramatic also. But uh, I don't care about that. Why? Because always underneath, on every text, uh, it's shaped in very different ways, these texts are shaped. But underneath, there is a person with whom you must identify. And this is built on this. And there is, this is a question only of perception of the person on the stage, nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, or a writer must know. Or uh, are those things a uh, writer must uh, say so everyone in public knows? Um, public is the smartest people in the world. They are very big idiots in what way? They, they don't know anything in an encyclopedic level. Uh, forget about that. They do not know anything. But they are crazy smart. What is, uh, what is our mechanism, how we are looking at the something, what's going on the stage? What is the measurement, how we are measuring? We are measuring only with this, our experience of life. We are measuring only with this. And if our experience of life is saying, you are lying, and this means that author must have these answers to himself, and then he will never lie, because this will be a real person. Of course, we are not telling for audience. This is first, this is second, this is third. Uh, by the way, one more thing to this. I'm all also working with directors and actors. And uh, this helps very much uh, for directors to understand uh, how to read plays. Also, they can, uh, they, ca they can create, for example, this Hamlet. It's very hard to understand because we have a lot of, of, of information about Hamlet. But it's very hard to read a real text. But if you are trying to build up the character, then you, can, you have a possibility to read a real text of Shakespeare, not a text you think is Shakespeare. And uh, this is rather good for directors, in fact, also for actors. Yeah. Hey, read the book. Well, uh, that was exactly what I want to say. Uh, it was a great reading for me. And especially now when people have heard you and seen you, they can read it with your voice. Oh, <laughs> so it's yeah. a good thing. Thank you, Loris. Thank you. Thank you, Loris. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>